In the previous video I covered um, the goal section and I talked about how you come up with a list of key areas which stem from the goals that you've defined. So in this part two um, I'm going to cover the remaining sections uh, of the time manager. So starting with the uh, task sheet. This is what you what you'll do is in each of the key areas that you've identified um, you'll have a a task sheet and this is an example this is um, an example of the task sheet so here I've got a key area let's say um, I've got a key area telecommunications and this is um, in my let's say it's the fourth key area that I've got I'd put this down <coughs> I, would, I would slot this in behind the, uh, the fourth key uh, area and then here I would list uh, I would list, list um, the high-level uh, tasks. So I might, for example, have uh, a task that I need to complete, which is uh, produce a high-level design document, let's say. And I could put that down here. Now, every task has a number of activities um, that go under it, which you list on this, in a separate document. So this is just high-level tasks. That'll be the first one. Let's say I've got another task that I need to complete, and I'm making this up as I go along, so I can't think of anything. I don't know, prepare presentation prepare a presentation I can't write very fast either um, and you put that down and you might have a deadline or you know you might for example once you complete the high-level design document you might need to give it to somebody um, so you you'd, you know, you'd make a note of that here you might also have um, a specific deadline so you, you might need to produce that by a certain date uh, which you can put down here so you can use this as you like I mean you might you, you can also have a column here for important tasks you might want to highlight that as a as a, an important um, task that needs to be completed so essentially uh, for each of the key areas you've got a task sheet where you list the high level tasks and then behind each one of these so for and under telecommunications which is my, which is my fourth key area I would have an activity sheet and I'll show you that next so here's an example of the activity sheet and this you'd slot this in behind the task sheet so the, in the previous example I had a task written down called um, uh, the task was to produce a high-level design document that was my first task in that um, in that particular key area so here is an activity sheet for this task uh, and what you do in, in the on the activity sheet is write down the individual activities that you need to complete um, in order to get this task done. So here I would put down, um, I don't know, study, another doc a standards document maybe. So I'd put that down as an activity that I need to complete. Um, and I might have to, uh, I don't know, get feedback from somebody on um, on a particular aspect um, of the design from design team. And so, so you'd list all of the activities that are needed. If you want to put someone's initials down here, you know, the person involved or the person you want feedback from, you'd put that down here. Uh, and if there's obviously if there's a deadline, you've got to get it done by a particular date, um, you can put that down there. And when you've completed that, you'd, you'd put a tick there and cross that out, or at least I cross it out as well. So this is where you list all of your activities. Just to recap, you've defined all of your goals. And then from those goals, you've identified the key areas that um, this is a symbol of a key by the way I'm not very good at drawing but you've identified the key areas and within under each key area you are going to list your tasks that need to be completed and within under each task you have an activity sheet which is this is what we're looking at right now and the activity sheet lists lists the specific activities that you want to uh, that need to be completed in order to, 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 to accomplish the task. Now the next step with the time manager system is that what you'll do is having recorded your activities uh, under the tasks you're going to take specific activities and you're going to copy those across to the diary section and you've got three views with the diary section you've got a monthly view a weekly view and a daily view and there's also you can also there's also a yearly view as well for long-term planning and the, the, the power of the time manager system is schedule you know taking the activities and transferring those across into the diary section to make sure that uh, you, you, you're getting those done so in the diary section I'll start with the monthly view um, I, I use the monthly and daily views I tend not to use the weekly views that much um, so the idea behind the uh, monthly view is that it gives you at a glance uh, it shows you where your booked slots are for the month ahead 
Um, and it's important not to put too much detail into this section of the diary because it can get cluttered very very easily. Um, and it, it and this particular this is this is in the format of a booklet that slots in. I mean, if you see the video that I've done um, of the time manager system, you'll see that this is actually uh, part of a separate um, portable. Uh, diary section that you can take out of the main time manager binder and keep with you or take with you to meetings uh, and and <coughs> at a glance you can um, at the top of the uh, of the month you can put down your elephant task which is the major act you know an elephant task is a major major uh, complex task that you need to complete that's going to take months uh, to complete possibly even years uh, and you tackle that by by um, uh, doing it a, a chunk at a time. So if I'm doing any kind of I don't know uh, certification uh, training, uh, or if you're you know if you're studying towards an exam, you'd put that down here. So you you know you'd put down your uh, CCNA. Let's say this is your certification that you want to achieve. So whatever the headline um, uh, elephant task is for the month that you want to complete, you'd list here. And the way that I use this is if I've got uh, a meeting scheduled between 10 and 12 on a Wednesday, I would just put um, a marker there to say there's a meeting and it might be a web based meeting. So I just put that down. Uh, as a as a trigger so that I know okay there's a meeting taking place and I'll have the details recorded elsewhere so at a glance you'll be able to see okay I've got slots available uh, for a meeting and I know where my slots are that, that are booked where I can't uh, participate in a, in a meeting uh, so you can use you can use this how you like really I mean I, I tend to just put initials down uh, of the person who's arranged the meeting unless it's some kind of web streaming uh, event and you might want to put down I don't know something to remind you that you've got an optician's appointment that day um, and you might want to record that or you maybe need to book an optician's appointment it's pretty much free form so you use it how you like um, I tend to put down little uh, recurring tasks. I mean, uh, tuition, for example, if you've got regular tuition, you might want to put that down here. You might want to go to the gym on a regular basis. You might want to do that. So this is just, uh, I, I use this to work out where, uh, when I need to arrange a meeting or somebody sends me a meeting invite, I can tell at a glance uh, whether there's a slot available and when would be a good time to have the meeting. So uh, this is the monthly view. Let's have a quick look at the weekly view, um, which I, as I said, I don't use that often, but it's worth covering. So here's what the weekly uh, view looks like. Um, it actually folds into two. So this is, I've opened this out to show you, uh, but normally what you'd have is you just see the either this view on the right, uh, where you can just put down some key um, bits of information for each day and uh, you can use this as a freeform column or you can use the the format on the left <clears throat> if you flip this around uh, you've got some detail if you want to record um, time slots you can do that as well so flipping the weekly plan sheet around uh, we get this view um, where you can um, you can use this as a week to view diary and record your in a meeting. So if I have a meeting between 9 and 10 on a Tuesday morning, I would simply um, record that fact here um, and just put down. I mean, there's not much room here to put down de details, but you could put the meet me meeting details down here. And some people prefer this and you still got the visibility of your, your elephant task for that particular week that you want to achieve. Uh, I prefer using the daily plan myself. This is a diary section that I prefer to use, so I'll record um, the, um, the the meetings that I've booked for the month ahead um, in the monthly view, uh, and then I, on a daily basis, at the end of each day, I'll prepare the next day by completing um, the daily sheet. So at the top, you've got your key uh, elephant task that you want to complete, which might whatever that might be, uh, and then in the uh, task section, you copy down. Uh, the high level tasks here and you list those down and specific activities that need to be completed you write those down uh, for that you need to complete for the day and any emails or telephone calls that you need to make you could write those down in this section the bottom right hand corner which is quite handy and then you just take through uh, the items as you do them during the day uh, the other thing is I look I look at the, the monthly view and I record the booked slots for that day so I might have a conference call uh, in the morning so I know that that's, that slot's taken up I might have another meeting in the afternoon which I'll just make a note of so at a glance <clears throat> I can see 
what I've got booked and what I've got um, where the empty slots are that I can then schedule my work and this for me is, is quite useful.